In this video, we're going to take a look at multiplying and dividing radical expressions. When we're multiplying radical expressions, what we want to do is take the radicand, in other words, what's inside the square roots, and we can multiply those things together and get that combination, that product, under the square root. And then from there, we can do some simplification. So let's take a look at this first one. What is the only operation that's going on between all that stuff? Well, multiplication. It's 3 times the square root of 6x times the square root of 10x. I can multiply those radicands right there, the 6x and the 10x, to give me the square root of 6 times 10 is 60, and then x times x is x squared. Okay? So then we have that 3 on the outside, don't lose track of that. Now we can take a look at what's under the square root and see if there's any perfect square factors there. If there are, we can break it up and do some simplification. So let's see. Hmm. Perfect squares, factors of 60. Perfect squares, 4 is a perfect square. Um, that goes into 60, 4 times 15. Um, 9, no. 16, no, 25, no, 36, no, 49, no, 64, too big, so we're done. Okay, so 4. All right, so we've got 3 times, we're going to break this thing up to the square root of 4, because that's a perfect square factor, times the square root of 15, times the square root of x squared. Okay, so here I multiplied the radicands to get one square root piece, and then I turned around and I broke it up again, because what that allows me to do is some simplification. I can take the square root of 4, that's 2, so I'm going to have 3 times 2 times square root of 15, well, perfect square factors of 15, nope, there aren't any, so I just got to bring that along. And then I have the square root of x squared. Well, that's just going to be x, okay? So then I'm going to clean up, and what can I pull together here? Well, I've got 3 times 2 times x. All those things that are on the outside of the square root, that would be 6x. And then inside the square root, I have that square root of 15. So I have 6x times the square root of 15. All right, let's take a look at this next one here. The rules for multiplying binomials follow whether it's a, just a regular old number or a radical. We still can use the FOIL method and figure out what we're going to get. So let's go ahead and FOIL these two binomials and then we'll simplify. So 4 times 1, first terms, is just 4. Then 4 times minus square root of 5 is going to be minus 4 square root of 5. Okay, then we've got square root of 5 times 1. That would be plus the square root of 5. Then square root of 5 times minus the square root of 5. Let me just write that out here so we don't lose track of what all is going on. So it's minus the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Okay, then let's go back and do some simplification. 4, can't do anything with that yet. Then I've got minus 4 times the square root of 5 plus the square root of 5. Well, remember that we can add those together because they're like radicals. Since so we have that same square root, square root of 5, so I have minus 4 of those plus 1 of those, so I'd have minus 3 square root of 5. Then over here, square root of 5 times the square root of 5, remember we can multiply the radicand, so... 5 times 5 is 25, so it's minus the square root of 25. Okay, so then I'm going to go back through and simplify anything more that I can. So I have 4, can't do anything else with that yet, can't do anything else with the 3, or minus 3 square root of 5. However, minus the square root of 25, well, that would just be 5. Okay. Getting a little simpler, and now I see something else I can combine. I can combine the 4 and the minus 5. So that's going to give me minus 1 minus 3 square root 
of 5. All right. Let's take a look at uh, some where we have some division going on here. All right. In this one, there's a couple ways we could approach this. Remember that if we have a square root over a square root, we could rewrite that as a fraction, the square root of that fraction, 2 over 6, and then simplify inside the square root there, and that would be the square root of 1 third. Okay, then remember that then I can take the square root of the numerator and the denominator. So I have the square root of 1 over the square root of 3. Now the square root of 1 is just 1 over the square root of 3. Okay, so then I need to rationalize the denominator. Remember, we can't leave a square root in the denominator. So to rationalize, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by that square root right there. So if I multiply by that, times square root of 3, times square root of 3, on top, 1 times square root of 3 is just the square root of 3, all over, we've got the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which would be the square root of 9, while the square root of 9 is just 3. So notice how we end up with whatever was inside there, whatever the radicand is when we multiply it by itself. So that's that. Now, we could also just take this and rationalize from there. Let's take a look at what that might look like. I'm gonna switch colors here just so we can tell the difference. So rather than pulling it back into a fraction and simplifying and then taking it back out, I'm just gonna go ahead and rationalize right here. So to do that, I would multiply by the square root of six on the top and the bottom. So I have the square root of two over the square root of six, I'm going to multiply by the square root of 6 on the top and the bottom. Then I have on top the square root of 12 over square root of 6 times square root of 6 is just 6. Okay, you might say, wait a minute, something's not right. Oh, but wait, square root of 12, any perfect square factors? Yes, 4 will go into 12. So I can break that up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 all over 6 still. Square root of 4 is 2, so I have 2 times the square root of 3 over 6. I can simplify this stuff sitting right here, divide by 2 top and bottom, so that would give me same thing. Okay. So notice two different methods we can approach that and we end up in the same place. The key is making sure that we look for those perfect square factors, things that we can simplify, and taking it from there. Okay, let's take a look at this last one here. We've got the square root of 24 over 4 times the square root of 3. Well, I need to rationalize that denominator, and I also, there's a perfect square factor of 24. So I've got a choice to make. I can start by simplifying that uh, 24 and then worry about rationalizing or I can rationalize and then simplify I'm gonna choose to rationalize and then simplify so I've got this I'm gonna multiply by the square root of 3 on the top and the bottom so then I get on top 24 times the square root of 3 would be um, 72 square root of 72 all over Square root of 3 times square root of 3 would be the square root of 9, which is 3, remember. And then we've got 4 times 3 on the bottom. I'll just write it like that for now. Now, square root of 72, perfect square factors. Let's see. Hmm. 9 goes in there. However, if I think about this for a second, 9. 9 times 8 is 72. 8 still has a perfect square factor. So maybe I should try to look for something bigger. Hmm. How about 36? 36 times 2 is 72. Ah, perfect. All right, so I'm going to go over here with that. So I have the square root of 36 times the square root of 2 all over 4 times 3 is just 12. Okay, then square root of 36 is 6 times the square root of 2 all over 12 then I can do some simplification. Remember, we can divide top and bottom by the same number to simplify, just a fraction, thinking of that 6 over 12 there. 
and that would be 1, and that would be 2, so it would be the square root 1 times the square root of 2, or just square root of 2 over 2. All right, multiplying and dividing radical expressions. Remember that if we have two square roots that are being multiplied, we can multiply the radicands and then take whatever we get from there, put that under the square root, and then break it up and simplify from there. FOIL method still applies even when we have radicals. And also, we cannot leave a square root in the denominator, so we have to do a process called rationalizing the denominator to get it out of there and get our, our fraction simplified. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math, and I know you can do great stuff.